Hey guys, I'm Nathan from Arms and Armor. Today I want to show you our Bohemian Bronze Sword, uh, which is a really beautiful piece of uh, Gothic weaponry. Stay tuned. I love this sword. It is so elegant. This is a piece that we're just finishing up uh, for a customer that is custom uh, with this wire wrap on the lower half of the grip. Usually in the stock piece, uh, it's leather the whole way, but this is a kind of custom thing that we can easily do. Uh, this sword is based on an original from right about the turn of the 16th century. So between 1490 and 1510, uh, this sword is clearly in the uh, Northern European style uh, with this writhed naturalistic uh, pommel that looks like essentially twigs. You can see here inside there's a hexagonal peening block with the peen of the tang there. The cross guard has a similar writhed twisting uh, appearance on this. The guard, or sorry, the grip, it's a nice riser in the center. You can readily fight with this one-handed, though it is a long sword. Uh, 44 inches overall. Uh, if you were mounted, use it in one hand. Otherwise, you put your second hand on here for all kinds of added uh, mobility. This grip uh, is relatively short compared to some other long swords of the period, but it's not at all outside of the ordinary. Many hand and a half swords, long swords, broad swords, uh, have grips of this size and the pommel right, allows you to lock your hand right in there. The blade on this is really interesting because it is hexagonal sectioned, right? So it's six sided. So the face of the blade is flat and then it has these long, facets down to the very fine edge. Additionally, it tapers very significantly. So the distal taper on this is quite dramatic from a quarter inch down to just a couple of millimeters. Uh, that means that this thing is a fillet knife. Uh, it is really uh, a scary weapon for unarmored uh, combat. This was probably something more like a personal self-defense weapon than a weapon uh, for war at that period, uh, although it certainly could have been uh, used by someone in armor to fight people who were not in armor, right? So this is not the kind of blade that you would use for half-sorting and fighting in armor. This is expressly for killing people who are minimally armored. Uh, it is very sharp. You can see here there's a fuller that extends about 10 inches, something like that, I'm estimating. I don't have the stat in front of me. Up the blade on each side. The point of balance on this is about six inches out from the cross, right? This gives this blade a really dramatic power in the cut, even though it has such dramatic distal taper. And so this blade is really made to flow through all kinds of cuts uh, fighting on foot. This uh, writhed style, you know, I've said it before, super German. Uh, so it's a beautiful Renaissance piece. This one, uh, the hilt furniture is blued. You can get it blued or bright. Either way, uh, no problem. And you can see the physics on the blade there. It's super elegant. You know, I always feel like hexagonal blades have gotten a bad rap. And I think it's mostly because, you know, during the 80s and 90s, there were a bunch of really cheap-ass blades that had a hexagonal section and no distal taper, right? They were just these heavy, chonky, sword-shaped objects. Uh, but there were all kinds of historical swords, European swords, that had this hexagonal section. They just also had 
lots of distal taper, and that's the key to one of these swords really working. So check out our website, check out the Bohemian Broadsword. Uh, I think that you'll really like it. These pictures, ooh, oh man, I am so filthy. All summer, you're gonna have videos of filthy sword makers on here because when you sweat making a sword, the dust just sticks to you. And there's no way I'm taking a shower for you guys. Not important enough. All right, thanks for watching, take care.